I've reviewed tons of different website builders. In fact, these are all website builders that I've reviewed. But for this video, instead of talking through each individually, I'm just gonna skip ahead and walk you through the six that I recommend. Of these six, Squarespace and Shopify are my top recommendations, but the other four each have unique strengths that will probably work well for the right type of user. Watch to the end of the video where I'll compare the costs of each. If you'd like to try one of the website builders, you can find a link to them in the video description. My work is supported by affiliate commissions, so I may earn a commission if you click one of these links. Okay, let's start with Squarespace. Squarespace is the best all around website builder. It's what I'd recommend for most small websites. I use it for my personal music website, my mom's therapy business, and my band. Squarespace has the best themes of any website builder, which sounds subjective, but honestly, there's no other website builder that matches their clean, modern themes. They do tend to have a specific look and feel, bold typography and lots of room for photos. Squarespace is easy to use, but among website builders, it's not the easiest. I'd say Weebly is the easiest, which I'll get to later in this video. So instead of easy to use, I'd describe Squarespace as intuitive. Everything is just thoughtful. You could say Squarespace is like the apple of website builders. Let me give you an example. Let's say you have a photo gallery and you want your thumbnails to be perfect squares. That probably means the photos will need to be cropped. Most website builders just crop automatically around the center of the photo and leave it at that. But that can be frustrating if the subject of the photo isn't in the exact center. That's why Squarespace includes a handy focal point tool that adjusts the crop. It's a small thing, but it shows you the attention to detail you'll find throughout Squarespace. When it comes to features, Squarespace has some of the best features of any website builder. Their iOS and Android apps are great. They have excellent e-commerce and a great form builder. They have the best donation system for nonprofits of any website builder, which again really shows their attention to detail. Most website builders say they have a donation system, but really it's just an embedded PayPal button, not Squarespace. Squarespace lets you customize the checkout, ask for suggested amounts, and they even let you customize email receipts so that they're donor friendly. Squarespace also has the best blogging of any website builder. It's really the only website builder that can compete with, with WordPress for blogging. Also, Squarespace is the only website builder that lets you syndicate a podcast. Just to briefly explain, other website builders say they can host podcasts, but all they mean is that you can embed your podcast in an audio player. They don't let you syndicate the podcast which is what is required to submit your podcast to Spotify and Apple Podcasts, which is kind of important. This is the kind of attention to detail I just appreciate about Squarespace. Shopify is what I recommend for e-commerce websites. The other website builders in this list can all build e-commerce websites, but they're also designed to build other types of websites, portfolios, blogs, small business websites, and a bunch more. Shopify is just for e-commerce, that's it. It's designed purely for e-commerce, so as a result, they put a lot more time and energy into e-commerce features. Now, Shopify is not the only website builder to focus exclusively on e-commerce. There's actually a whole class of these e-commerce website builders, but of them, Shopify is the industry leader and it's the one I recommend. This is Google Trends. It shows interest in the top five e-commerce website builders, Magento, WooCommerce, Volusion, BigCommerce, and Shopify. Right now we're looking at 2010 to 2015. Watch what happens to Shopify from 2015 to 2020. Shopify pulls away from the pack and becomes the industry leader. How did this happen? Well, it happened because Shopify kept shipping innovative features while also keeping their software easy to use. Other e-commerce website builders have struggled to keep up with the pace of their innovation. An example of this is Shopify's App Store. You see, all e-commerce websites have basically the same core needs. Products, orders, discounts, analytics, customers, that kind of thing. Shopify's core covers these really well. Then there are the things that only some e-commerce websites will need. Digital downloads, gift wrap-up sales, back-in-stock notifications, order mapping, and just a ton more. If you want these features, you just go to Shopify's app store and add them. And because Shopify was the first e-commerce website builder to launch an app store, they also have the largest amount of apps available by far. Third-party app developers typically develop their apps for Shopify because that's where the users are. But the app store also does something else, something less apparent. The app store means 
Shopify doesn't have to shoehorn unnecessary features into the core. The core stays clean, tidy, and intuitive. This is kind of the secret to why Shopify is easy to use. All you have to do is try another e-commerce website builder like Volusion to see what happens when you don't have an app store. Volusion has to squeeze everything into the core. The interface is bloated and disorganized. Users are stuck wading through pages of forms. The App Store is just one of the innovative features Shopify has launched. There's honestly more than I could cover in this overview. For example, Shopify is the only e-commerce builder with their own payment gateway. Basically, you need a payment gateway to accept credit cards. For a long time, you had to use a third-party provider like Braintree or PayPal. Shopify took that entire step away by launching their own payment gateway. It's just one less thing for you to think about. All of this is in an effort to reduce the hurdles necessary to starting a store. That's the big vision of Shopify. Shopify CEO Toby Luque has said that before Shopify, the e-commerce industry was like what MP3 players were like before the iPod. Competitors had tons of advanced features, but they just sucked. They were bulky, hard to use, and looked horrible. Honestly, he's not wrong. Shopify's innovative features and intuitive software have made it the best e-commerce website builder. Webflow wants to give you the power of coding even if you don't know how to code. That's their big promise. It's why their homepage says that you can break the code barrier. It's why they started a no-code conference. And it's why their CEO habitually proselytizes the no-code movement on Twitter. What's kind of remarkable is that Webflow actually lives up to this promise. As weird as this is to say, Webflow feels almost magical. At the heart of Webflow is their designer tool. The designer is what gives you the power of coding, even if you don't know how to code. The interface roughly maps to front-end code. These are HTML elements, and these are CSS styles, though you don't need to understand this to use Webflow. At first, the designer might seem a bit intimidating, and that's kind of the point, because Webflow isn't shying away from complexity. Instead, it's about embracing complexity. Let me explain. When we add a paragraph element to this blank page, it'll just sit there, lamely spanning the width of the screen. Web developers will understand what's happening here, but non-coders probably won't. Basically, to constrain the width of this element, it needs to be placed within a container. This is what's called the box model. It's a fundamental concept of web design, and Webflow doesn't want to abstract you away from concepts like the box model. Webflow is a categorically different tool than the other website builders in this list. For example, Squarespace isn't designed for you to have complete freedom. You don't design a theme from scratch in Squarespace. Instead, Squarespace provides templates and smart defaults. It purposely abstracts you away from the complexity of code, while Webflow purposefully embraces the complexity of code. Because of this, Webflow has a steeper learning curve, but is also much more flexible. You can design just about anything with Webflow. In fact, there is a community of designers who will rebuild websites just to show that you can do it in Webflow. Here's an example of someone rebuilding the AirPods website with Webflow. Where I think Webflow starts to get really interesting is when you mix in the Webflow CMS. The CMS is made up of collections, which are basically like a database. Collections are made up of fields, for example, like a plain text field, an image field, dates, colors, rich text, and, and like a bunch more. So for example, we could create a collection called articles with a headline, date, permalink, and content. Then we could add a few articles. Finally, we go back to the designer and add a list of articles using the collection list element. This is honestly really crazy. Uh, the groundbreaking thing isn't necessarily the CMS. The CMS is like pretty typical. The groundbreaking thing is that you can integrate the CMS into the Webflow designer. That's honestly crazy to be able to design a website from scratch and scaffold up a CMS without ever touching code. It's, it's like remarkable. The main thing to acknowledge is that Webflow has a learning curve. It's not nearly as easy to use as Squarespace or Wix. You will need to understand the fundamentals of web design. But if you put in a couple hours of learning in the Webflow University, you might be surprised at how far you get. Card is for building one-page websites. One-page websites can be a simple about page or a landing page or sometimes something just a little bit longer. But basically all the content is on one page. Because Card is only for one-page websites, it's also the easiest way to build one-page websites. You just add elements, style them, and you can create links between sections. 
technically you can make one page websites with other website builders, but they often feel like you're hacking the editor in order to do it. Since Card is made exclusively for one page websites, it's actually a more intuitive way of building them. Plus Card is also way, way cheaper than competitors. Here's what the cheapest plan with no ads costs for one year for each of the website builders on this list. And this is what Card comes in at. Now, of course, you'll only want to use Card if it makes sense for your website to be one page. But you might be surprised at what you can do with one page. If you're on the fence, I'd suggest just trying Card for 15 minutes. Why couldn't a band's website be on one page or a restaurant's website? Weebly is not as sophisticated as like, say, Squarespace, but it is a little bit friendlier. If you're not particularly tech savvy, you might want to try Weebly. It's easy to use. The interface is always simple and it's clear. It starts with the website editor. Pages are built by dragging elements from the side drawer into your page. Elements are then edited within the page. Easy, right? Now let's try something more complicated. Let's edit this background image. Notice how the drawer slides out and the background editor slides in. These are the kind of thoughtful touches that I appreciate about Weebly. They keep the editor uncluttered and focus you on the task at hand. Honestly, this is the type of thing you might not even notice, but it's also these details that make Weebly easy to use. This really hits home when you try other website builders who just stack additional interfaces on top of one another and it quickly gets overwhelming. Even though Weebly is easy to use, it's not just simple. It's actually quite powerful. There's good e-commerce, a membership system, uh, a good form builder and an app store. The app store includes apps like uh, multi-language, which lets you add pages with different languages and uh, paid members is an app, which lets you sell memberships. I should point out though, Weebly's app store isn't anything like Shopify's. It's been around for a few years, but it hasn't really taken off in the same way. If there's a shortcoming to Weebly, it's in theme customization. You can only choose one color for your theme and it's applied scattershot throughout the website. There's no way to customize where or how it's applied. This is a bit lame. I have complicated feelings about Wix. Wix has a long list of strong features, tons and tons of design elements, booking system, uh, good e-commerce, a good form builder, and an app marketplace. Plus, when you look at market share, it's also the most used website builder. But Wix is a blank canvas editor. Basically, this means you can drag any element anywhere on a page. You can even nudge this one pixel over if you wanted to. It's sort of like how you might edit a PowerPoint presentation. This is fundamentally different from other website builders. For example, Weebly lets you drag elements, but they snap within a preset grid. You don't have that with Wix. Wix lets you drag and drop without any constraints, which sounds nice, but it does come with challenges. For example, watch what happens when I add more text to this page. The image below the text also moves down. Handy, that's what you'd expect to happen. What you might not notice is that the image no longer retains the same distance from the footer. Let's rewind and watch it again. See what happened? That's kind of annoying. Here's another example. I'm gonna move this image to the top of the page. Now, if I switch to the mobile view of my website, you might notice the image hasn't moved there. It's still at the bottom. That's because I also need to make the change in the mobile editor. This is not obvious. Having to make the same edit twice is tedious and worse, it relies on you to catch the error in the first place. Wix's blank canvas editor creates more knock-on issues like this. Wix does its best to stay ahead of these issues, but it often feels like they're playing whack-a-mole with these bugs and not addressing the underlying problem. All this being said, if what you want is a blank canvas editor like this, Wix is what I'd recommend you use. So what does this all cost? What about pricing? Well, let's take a look at the cheapest annual plan of each website builder. Squarespace's cheapest plan is their personal plan. It costs $144 and includes a domain name. One note, we're looking at annual plans here. For some reason, every website builder advertises the annual plan as a per month cost, which is so confusing. So like Squarespace says $12 per month, but really you're gonna be billed $144 per year. Let's keep going. Webflow's cheapest plan is their basic website plan. It costs $144 and includes a domain name. Card's cheapest plan is Pro Lite, but it doesn't let you connect a domain name. The cheapest card plan to let you connect a domain name is Pro Standard. It costs $19 per year, but doesn't include a free domain name. 
So let's say you buy the domain name from Namecheap for 10 bucks, which means the annual cost for card comes to $29. Way, way cheaper than any other website builder on this list. But remember, it's for one page websites. Weebly has a $72 personal plan, but it includes an ad that scrolls along your website. So we're not gonna count that. Their cheapest plan with no ads is the professional plan. It costs $144 and includes a domain name. Wix's cheapest plan is their combo plan. It costs $156 and includes a domain name. Technically, Shopify's cheapest plan is Shopify Lite, but it's not really for websites. It's more for embedding a buy button on an existing website. Their cheapest website plan is Basic Shopify at $348. It doesn't include a domain name, so let's put it at $358 for one year. So Shopify is clearly the most expensive, but it's, it's for e-commerce websites. Squarespace, Weebly, Wix, Webflow, they don't include e-commerce in their cheapest plans. Instead, those are usually higher paid plans. For example, Squarespace's e-commerce plan is basic commerce and it costs $312 per year. Let's recap. Squarespace is the best all around website builder. Shopify is the best e-commerce website builder. Webflow gives you the flexibility of code without requiring you to learn how to code. Card is the best website builder for one page websites. Weebly is good for ease of use. And the thing to know about Wix is that it has a blank canvas editor. Now, just to remind you, these six are not the only website builders in the world, far from it. You can find my thoughts on a whole bunch of other website builders at my website, sitebuilderreport.com. But these are the six that I recommend. If you'd like to try one of these website builders, you can find a link to them in the video description. My work is supported by affiliate commissions, so I may earn a commission from these links. Thank you for watching and good luck making your website.